Predator 1, 2 and 2, and it's list day. Yeah, um, it's gonna be the continuation of my favoritist series, the top 10 best cards in every set of the game. And we are at the legendary, the infamous Cyberdark Impact. So, in order to celebrate this monumentous occasion of finally getting to the most famous bad set in GX, I'm actually gonna split it into two lists because we can't talk about all the good stuff in this set without actually talking about all the bad stuff in this set and why it's so famously bad. And in order to start this off, we we're actually going to start off with the top 10 worst cards in the set so that we can end on a high note because I at least like to put forth this hypothesis and that this set isn't actually as bad as everyone says it is. It's, um, it's just very polarizing. Without further ado, we are going to get into the top 10 worst cards in Cyber Dark Impact because... I like to do this to myself. Number 10 is Cyberdark Keel. Yeah, I picked one of the Cyberdarks. Um, they did get better with age because their legacy support was actually pretty solid. It fixed a lot of problems with the deck. It wasn't good enough to make the deck relevant, but it uh, it at least fixed a problem that was there. However, when the deck came out, it pretty much confounded fans because Zane went from a very powerful still relevant rogue deck of cyber dragons and he changed over to these things and they're bad and it's really silly but anyway what does cyber dark keel do when this card is normal summon you can target a level three or lower dragon in your graveyard equip it to this target he gains the attack of the equipped dragon when he destroys a guy in battle he does 300 burn damage to your opponent and uh, if he would be destroyed, you destroy the equipped monster instead. Uh, by battle, not by card effects. And there you see why, oh why, this card and this deck ceases to function. They're all predominantly machines, but they are, yet they require dragons in their graveyard. And for them to be at their peak performance, they require some level of setup in your grave. Sure, at this time we had Future Fusion. With Five-Headed Dragon, I'm sure you would get plenty of dragons in the grave. However, you still had to draw the Future Fusion, which is wildly unsearchable at this point. And even in the future f f uh, fusion, future of future fusion, it's really still, it's ser more searchable, but certainly not by any means that a cyber dark deck would really want to run. And like I said, obviously they gave them some in-theme dragons in order to fill this up, because otherwise they were running a bunch of like, basically out of theme dragons, which were just probably clunky and bad and had nothing to do with the deck. Like, I mean, hell, in Duel Link Zane runs Exploder Dragon just to have a dragon with a decent effect. And if you get through all of this setup and you actually get some guy in the grave, you normal summon this thing, the summon goes through, he activates his effect, his effect goes through and he equips it and it doesn't get MST'd, he becomes a beater and he, if he can get over stuff, it's for 300 burn damage, who cares? And that's predominantly the problem with cyber darks. Their effects just aren't good enough to warrant all the work you have to do for them. Anyway, next. Combo Master! Now you could put also Combo Fighter in this position. However, I would like to say that Combo Master is probably objectively worse, being that he's a Tribute Summon. If a Chain Link 2 or more occurred in your main phase 1, during that battle phase of this turn, he can attack twice. Alright, this marks one of the weirdo effects in this uh, set. There's like, I guess, three styles of monster or card in this set. Cards that only can be used at certain parts of a chain, like at a certain chain link. Cards that only do something if they saw a chain link on the board. Some weird column mechanic way out of left field. Or levels. No, there's also levels in this and, and the Cyberdarks. This set's a mess. This set's a mess. I, regardless of the card quality and whether or not it's as bad as everyone says, it's certainly a mess. And uh, this this card is, is, is by no means any less poorly designed than any other bad card in the set. Wind Warrior isn't the worst typing and only one tribute's not awful for a 2200 beater, but the fact that you get any real value out of them, you need to have a chain link two or higher during your main phase means it's either you're interacting with your opponent, which is something you'd never want to rely on because if your opponent can't have any in the chain two or they see this thing on board, they're not going to chain to it, so that'll never happen. And then otherwise you have to blow a bunch of your own resources chaining your MSTs to your your chalices or some hooey just so you can get the, the chain link too. It's, it's, <laughs> what a just, what a goofy mess. I, I get what they're doing. They're trying to, you know, make like you gaining advantage by having a lot of interactivity between the two players. However, 
Whenever a card relies on your opponent to do something, it's almost always inherently bad because your opponent to out that card could just simply not do that. You, you don't want your opponent's best strategy to be inactivity. It's it just, it, the, it really wrecks a card design. It's lame, it's silly, but not everyone's an AI and YGO pro or just plays cards, you know what I mean? But anyway, next. Oh, here we go. Stray Osmodian. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, both players gain 800 life points. What? Who cares? All right. Cheesy, mild, tiny bit of burn, like a mucky or whatever the hell that name of that card is, is crappy. Mild, cheesy, life point gaining effects is even crappier. And the fact that it does both players is even worse. Why the hell would you ever play this thing outside of something like, I don't know, a really bad build of Nurse Burn simply because you're just looking for any effect possible that gives your opponent life points. Oh boy. There's a million other ways to do that that are a hell of a lot better that also don't rely on you losing a weak monster in a battle. Granted, it's a level 3 Fiend. That's uh, like the worst, the worst Burning Abyss tech ever, but it at least has some play or it has at least some value as what it is but not what it does. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! where the life points don't matter. Yes, the life points don't matter. A lot like a screen door on a submarine. Yeah, you, you, your only life point that matters is your last one, unless you have a deck that pays a lot of cost. So increasing your own life points, in most cases, is a fruitless effort, unless you're trying to get a really, really cheesy win when time is called. So, oh, Stray Osmodian, you stupid card, you. Corruption Cell 80. It wouldn't be a mid-GX set if a Dave wasn't ripping on an alien card or a hero card. Let's rip on an alien card. Now I could go on for hours and hours why counters are stupid and why they never work in Yugi Mans and the only instance where they're actually good, they were horribly nerfed by another mechanic and that is Kaijus, because you can only have one Kaiju. If you could have more than one Kaiju, then their crappy counter mechanic would actually be fine because all of their effects are really, really, really good. Like, Gamasil is broke if you ever actually read the thing what it actually does. It Sure, it's stupid that it relies on counters which are dumb and bad, but at least Gamasil himself is broken, and Dogron is a walking Regeki, and that Jizakiru is like a, a pop, and you get an extra thing back. Like, it's, it's like, all of their effects are really good, and they're crippled by the fact you can only have one of them, but Okay, I, I digress. Counters themselves are a clumsy mechanic, and it takes broken effects like that that are on a kaiju in an inherently broken summoning mechanic like that is of a kaiju in order for them to even be worth it. And frankly, you know, the kaijus would be a thousand times better off if they didn't have to rely on a field spell to accrue counters. And how does that field spell accrue counters? Just by you simply playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And aliens, aliens don't have that benefit. Nope. Uh, counters tend to be crappy because they're inherently a two-card combo. One card to generate these bullshit counters that don't do anything, and two, another card to actually use them for something. And that kind of clumsiness is a adding a mana resource to a game that is not built around a mana resource. This isn't Magic the Gathering, this isn't Pokemans, this isn't Dragon Ball Super, so therefore, it's like shoving a mana uh, requirement into the game is inherently going to be clumsy. And uh, without just something like Kaiju Waterfront or uh, Kyoto Waterfront, which literally just accrues them no matter what the hell you do, getting counters on board is a pain in the butt. Whether it's those old spellcasters that you have to play spells, or whether it's aliens and you have to generate these stupid things and then get a bunch of effects that aren't even worth it. I could, I could make a whole video on this. But anyway, enough ranting. What does this piece of crap do? Place one A counter on a face of monster that can have an A counter. Oh, what the Free. I, I understand what aliens are trying to do, you know, they're trying to build their A counter thing like around like butt probes or whatever the hell it is and you know, be aliens. That's cool. Abduct your opponent's stuff with that brainwashing beam and all this other hooey. It's at least neat card design. However, basing it around counters was an inherent way of making that kind of what otherwise would be kind of cool a clumsy thing. And this is exactly what they need, a neg one to put one counter on something. All of, most of their monsters put counters on things, which is good, meaning that their monsters are helping forward their game state. This card attempts to help forward their game state, but 
it does so at a net loss, which is just bad card design. That counter itself isn't doing anything. So if you don't have any of the counter, the cards to work with the counter you're giving that monster, you're losing a card in your hand for no reason. Like, bah, it's so annoying. <laughs> it reminds me of that FA card that just boosts levels and it's all it does. It's a neg one, it doesn't help you at all. It doesn't forward your game state. It's almost, it feels like it does, but it actually doesn't. It's bad. Flash of the Forbidden Spell. Stop referencing Cursed Seal of the Forbidden Spell with these cards. This is like the second one in GX, and like Cursed Seal is a great card. Sure, you take a you take a, a net loss on the card, but if you can lock out a, a very specific spell, then bam, you can really close out your opponent's deck. Like you hit their engage with Cursed Seal, that that that, that Sky Striker player is gonna have a bad day. Like he just lost his major uh, source of advantage. But this has nothing to do with that. Stop naming those things. What does it do? You can only activate this when your opponent's main monster zones are all occupied. Uh, and then destroy all their monsters. Now, YGO Pro doesn't actually say main monster zones. I'm making an assumption on that. Because this probably hasn't ever been eroded to include main monster or extra deck monster zone. So I'm assuming it's main monster zones. That's how it would be ruled. If it's not, you know, don't at me in the comments. <laughs> But obviously this card's completely useless now because we have a Gekyu and Dark Hole. But let's just go back in time when Cyber Dark Impact came out. Why would this card still be bad? Well, uh, again, it comes down to that old adage. If it requires your opponent to do anything, it's crappy. And this is requiring your opponent to have a full board of monsters. First of all, how have they not won already? Did you hit them with Swords of Revealing Light or some other cheese? And they just kept... Filling up their monsters? Well, that was dumb on their part, because they didn't need to do that. They had game with the three monsters they had when you did that to them. So, that's on them to lose this bad card. And even still, that situation is extremely specific and will never happen! Ah, I get what they're trying to do. This set had actually quite a few, like, bad versions of banned cards. There's like a, a crappy MST in this set, too. And I get what they're doing. They're trying to, like, nerf good cards so that, like, we can actually have those abilities and those card effects but just at a more fair of a cost. And it makes sense. They've done that with a lot of erratas and retrains as of late. However, it's like they were just way overcompensating and making the cards almost impossible to use is to get those broken effects. So they just went a little overboard with the nerfing. And this is just a, a very good example of that. It, it'll, it'll never, it'll always be dead. It'll, it'll always be dead. Byro Sacrifice. Ugh. This card's not the worst, but it's so far down the list simply because it's running into the problem that it works with a very specific kind of trappy monster. You can only activate this when a monster on your side of the field is destroyed by battle, special summon one Cyber Ogre from your hand. Now, I'm not gonna go over Cyber Ogre that much, but he's like a level five, and his hand trap effect only works when you have another copy of him on board, so at least makes some sense that there'd be some sort of card in order to get the first one on board, because he's like a level 5, so you might not necessarily just be able to play him, because he requires a tribute, unless you like Cyber Dragon, Perth, or something, whatever, I, I digress. I get where the card is coming from, it probably made more sense in the anime, I'm assuming Zane played this thing. <laughs> so, uh, it's just that it's one of those really situational cards, that's completely catering to one very specific bad card. It's just, it, it, it just falls into irrelevancy. And the fact that its activation condition isn't just summon cyber ogre from cyber ogre, rah, rah, summon cyber ogre from your hand. No, it's like something has to happen first in order to summon a very specific card. It, it's just that's cheesy and bad. I, I'm not gonna spend much time on it. Oh, this set's a marathon. Trojan blast. Bow chicka bow wow. You can only activate this trap card when your opponent activates an effect that would shift to the control of one monster on the field. And only when it shifts a monster from your side of the field to theirs, so very specifically. You destroy the monster they're trying to steal, then you hit them for some burn damage equal to its attack. <laughs> it's like a, if I can't have them, nobody will. It's, oh my god. Now, you thought the last card was extremely specific in how it's used? This is like like super specific in how it used. It's like, I guess this is supposed to be an anti-alien card when they hit you with that brainwashing beam. You're like, ha ha, not so fast, alien scum. <laughs> like you need to play this kind of crap in order to try to beat that deck. You couldn't just play a competently built strategy. No, you're siding in this janky crap for a situation that'll never happen. It the only thing I can say about the card is if we get a 
deck like, let's say, Gradles, but it's actually, like, super good and meta-relevant, uh, I love Gradles. I wish they were better. Another alien deck, but they're, like, based on Body Snatchers, which is just a thousand times more cool. But anyway, uh, I could I could talk about my love of Gradles all day. But the deck is clunky and bad and loses to some very specific situations, but let's just say it was really good. Like, it got some uber support, and it just became tier one. Then, sure, cards like this might be better because then it actually has some sort of function in the format. However, uh, we have better options. Uh, Owner Seal is better. Remove Brainwashing is literally a straight upgrade to this card because instead of hitting your opponent for some cheesy burn that's not going to matter and killing your own monster and taking a neg two, no, it just prevents your opponent from taking your monster to begin with the, and shutting down the whole great old strategy. So, yeah, yay! Yeah, we have better options. I'm getting frustrated. I'm going frustrated because this cards are so bad. And at least, at least though, they're fun bad. Unlike the last set, they were just boring bad. These are fun bad. Dark Lucius, level eight. Ah, I couldn't let the level monsters get away with, with, with Scott Free. And he's actually, he's actually bad for a really specific reason. Um, and it's, it's kind of not his own fault, and I feel terrible about it. What does Dark Lucius level eight do? Well, he's gotta be summoned by the level six effect. And when he's done that, any monster he destroys by battle, their effects are negated, and you banish the monster destroyed. Which, he's like a, a better Armadis. And at like, what, 3,000? 2,800 attack. Yeah, pretty solid. Big enough to matter, big enough to be important. His effect means you can bash over certain monsters and not have to worry about a retaliation in effect, and you can remove that monster from play, so you don't have to worry about any kind of floating whatsoever. This thing would be Dante's worst nightmare. So why is he so, so high on the list? It's because he's a level monster, number one, and number two, it's that first clause of his effect. If this card was summoned by the effect of the level six. Meaning, if you use their best level support card, that level up card, which forces this thing to happen, he comes out as a beat stick with no effect. He can't get his actual effect if you summon him by any other means except by the level six, which you have to summon by the effect of level four. Which mean, and I think the way they work is like they only summon if they killed something in battle, which means it takes like six turns in order to play this thing. That is so slow and dumb and a waste. What a waste! Like otherwise, you know, he's kind of cool. Like that, his battle ability is actually still at least somewhat semi-meta relevant. But nah, he's slow as, as dirt. He's also dirt attribute, despite being called Dark Lucius. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. But overall, it's just clumsy card design. And otherwise ruins a pretty solid effect. Are you guys ready for this one? This is the other chain link mechanic that was introduced in the set. All the monsters were like, I need to see a chain link happen. I need to see it. And then I'll do something. And then those chain links that are happening, those are all the spell and traps. And they get effects, but can only be activated at like chain links specifically. Chain healing. It's a trap card. What does it read? Gain 800 life points. <laughs> ah! Oh, who the hell cares? If this card was activated as chain link two or three, shuffle it back into your deck. If this card was activated as chain link four or higher, put it back in your hand. Presumably instead of sending to the graveyard after it resolves. I mean, the other ones in this set can only be activated at certain chain links, like the crappy MST, uh, mystical, Wind Typhoon or whatever it's called. And those are bad in their own right because they have an extremely specific activation condition, but at least it's an MST. You know, sure, it'll never go off, but when it does, okay, it's at least MST. That's a good effect. This, sure, you could just use it and, you know, not get its bonus abilities, but to get its bonus abilities to make this card worth it, it needs to be like Chain Link 4 and then for what? 800 life points. Life points don't matter! I'll offset the cost of your Cleefort Scout. There you go. I broke the meta with that one, Dave. You're the best around. Ain't no one ever gonna keep you down. But no, I could go on and kid around about this card. It's just so incredibly lackluster. And the fact that it's a trap is just insult to injury. It could have at least been a quick play spell. But no, no, it's slow and its effect isn't good and it, to get its best value, it requires a very specific situation. It's just a bad card. 
And we're not going to have any dishonorable or honorable mentions this time around. If you want to put an honorable mention in here, it'll be that wind typhoon thing because it's it's not very good. But I wanted to include like only like one type of the weirdo mechanics introduced per thing, like one of the columns, one of the chains, one of the look at a chain, one of the cyber. Like so, I didn't want to like pollute the list with too many of the same thing but if you want to give an honorable mention it's that one but but nah man it's time for sponsor sponsorness today's sponsor like every other video unless i say so is metamats ah yes metamats if you guys want a custom cloth play mat like one of those spellground style things and it's not just a giant rubber mouse pad with a silly picture of anime waifus on it uh i guess you could conceivably get a nice high quality cloth mat with some anime waifus on it uh, i mean I actually have one. But, uh, no, Metamats is your choice for that kind of weeby stuff. Go for it, Holmes. I ain't gonna judge. I'm right there with you. But if you want to support the channel and support Metamats and, and get a couple bucks off your purchase over at Metamats, use the code TROLLAMENA and you will get the discount code. It will be awesome. But anyway, number one. Ah, yes. You thought I got all the way through that list without including one of those cheesy column cards. Uh, but no, the cheesy column card's number one. <laughs> it's Senate Switch. <laughs> ah, this card's bad. Ah, what does it do? Once per turn during your main phase, you can target one monster on the field, move that monster to an adjacent main monster zone. But why though? When this card came out, it was obviously to be used with the other column monsters in the set, the alien, the rhino, and the storm shooter guy, which all had different effects depending on what column they were in. They were all not super great, but they at least used their placement for some sort of function. And that's at least kind of cool. Like, that's why I left them off the list because they at least did something in their column. Like the invader guy, if there's nothing in his way, he can attack directly. That's at least kind of cool, I guess. But uh, no, this thing, all it does is move your monsters around, which has almost no function, even in that deck. You could just put the monsters onto the field in the right place. This thing, at best, just mitigates your own misplays. It's just really, really silly. And okay, fine, let's let's zoom forward to links, where columns, columns matter. No, they don't. If you're link spamming, you're link climbing, if you're not, you, you don't need this card to do that. Like. If you're playing your Gokis, you can extra link your opponent and you've never needed to move one of your guys. If you need to move one of your guys, you screwed up. You misplayed. It, it's not, you don't need to run bad cards in a deck to mitigate a misplay. If you're assuming that you stink at the game and you're gonna put cards in it to fix your own mistakes, that's, that's bad deck building. Just get good at the deck. Just practice so you don't do that. So you don't need to waste a spot in your deck for something dumb like Senate Switch. But fine, let's just say that you're a salty blue eyes player. You're watching this and you're getting all huff and puff and mad because I'm not going to talk about your deck. Well, you know what? I am going to talk about your deck. Back in the day, some jackhole thought it would be really funny to target Maiden with the Eyes of Blue at this thing to summon a blue eyes white dragon because it's a completely benign targeting effect that they could kind of use every single turn. Like, oh, it doesn't actually do anything to her. It doesn't kill her, it doesn't negate her effects, doesn't do anything to her so that I don't have to worry about like accidentally killing my monster just so I can get her targeting ability off. I get what you're doing. However, um, that wasn't a good build of the deck. It was just the only build people were trying. You were much better off just playing her and letting your opponent attack into it and getting a blue eyes that way, because at least you're forcing your opponent, you're wasting their battle phase, you're preventing them from using an effect on her. Like, triggering her yourself in order to make Azure Eyes is really kind of clumsy. And with modern support, you absolutely don't need to do this. And let's say, you don't even need to play Maiden, frankly, but let's say you wanted to. You have in-theme things. Like, the other tuners can target her and make her effect do things. Like, so you don't even need this stupid card anymore. And frankly, equip spells were probably better options than this thing ever was. It was a clumsy build of the deck to simply fill a hole for a card that didn't exist yet. This doesn't make the card good, it just means it had a function, and it wasn't even a good one at that. Try Maiden with the Eyes of Blue with Moon Mirror Shield, and then come back to me and argue it. And if you want to still make that argument, then fine, but... I just gave you a better tech for your old school blue eyes tech because that turns her into an actual threat on board. So do that instead. <laughs> this card's dumb. Remember back when Blinks first announced and we thought maybe this card would see some play because we thought like you'd have to move your monsters and stuff. But no, you don't. You don't need to do that. If you need to do that, you did something stupid. But anyway, guys, that was the worst cards in Cyber Dark Impact. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, got all fired up on that one. But uh, in order to end this on a good note, next time, next week, we will be uh, we will be looking at the best cards in the set to kind of prove that, sure, these 10 cards were absolute hot booty and deserve all the ire of the player base. However, the set itself does not because there are 10 really solid cards in this set as well. Uh, and that could, is more to be said than some of the other sets that have come before it in GX. So this card, this set just has a bad rap because how bad these cards were. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Cyberdark Impact and whether you're excited for part two. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time. What's up douchebags? By the power of this heel of all my calculos, I command you to subscribe to the channel. Grab your deck and be sure to click one of these other videos by David AK1212. It's the best damn channel on the internet. Yeah, man. Yeah.